guys, what's going on? Kate here from Rise and Shine with Signs. Today I want to talk to you about a project that I recently did and it blew up in my face. So I like to think I'm relatively good working with epoxy, but sometimes we have fails. We, I say like me and the mouse in my pocket, I have lots of fails. I'm gonna show you what I did. So not only did I mess it up once, I actually messed it up twice. So and today we're gonna talk about things to not do when you're working with wood and epoxy and the things you can do to make them better. So before I get started, I'm gonna ask you kindly if you would hit that like button and if you feel so motivated to hit that subscribe button to help me support and grow my channel, I would greatly appreciate it. All right, so let's get right into it. So I have this beautiful We the People flag that I created. All right, we're gonna talk about this. This is the first go run that I did. So when I was creating this, I actually was, I pocketed this um, all out at about, I wanna say 0 0.09 is what I pocketed the everything out at. And it actually came out really beautiful. And I think it would have been perfect, except for one, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm fogging my throat, um, except for one thing. I made the mistake of doing a base coat of clear epoxy because what I didn't want to have happen is I didn't want the wood um, to absorb the black epoxy and then have all kinds of like bleed lines in the wood. So mistake number one, use a sanding sealer. Don't use... Um, epoxy if you want and if you do the problem that I ran into it was a quick setting epoxy and so almost as soon as I poured it it was just already starting to set up and goo in some areas it was thicker in some areas it was thinner and then I was trying to get it out of the way so then when I poured the black epoxy on um, let me just show you really closely you know you can probably see it from a little distance but you can see around the stars where the epoxy did not pick up it didn't pick up at all, okay? Um, yeah, and then we're gonna talk about that big boo-boo there in the middle. The rest of it, sorry, it's a big old heavy piece of board. Um, the rest of it came out okay. There were some like really faint spots, you know, here and there throughout the board, which really like to most normal people, they would never notice that. They would not have a problem with it. But I, being the perfectionist that I am, I did not like it and I really did not like the faintness around the stars. I wanted it to be 100% black and consistent all the way through the sign. So I thought, okay, well, I can probably still salvage this sign. Probably like most of you are thinking, it's not a bad sign. <sighs> I forgot to zero out all of my X, Y, and Z. Uh, what I did was I actually had my surfacing bit, um, which... Speaking of, I use a, a surfacing bit from IDC Woodcraft. It's a really great bit. Um, this is actually a new bit that here it has out. I just purchased this. And it has, this um, particular bit actually has four flutes instead of three. So it gives it a much nicer finish. They are, um, I really love how this, this bit looks. I'm super excited to show you that. So continuing on with the mistakes, I put my router bit in. I did not set that zero because the bit was flush with the material. And if that is the case, you always need to have your Z set to zero so it knows exactly where to start. Um, and I did not do that. And so therefore when it picked up and it came in, it just dove straight into the work piece. So you're probably asking yourself, well, shit, now what? What do I do now? But I'm gonna just let you know, I'm gonna be honest and real. I used a lot of words probably my mom would not have been so proud of. So, yeah, so there's that. Okay, so I'm going to show you again, not just this one time did I make this mistake on this slide. I was chatting with my husband, and he said, why don't you just flip the board over, see if you can redo it. And I really don't like sending bad projects to my client, but it actually happens to be one of my husband's buddies, so he sent him a message and said, Hey, are you just going to be hanging this on the wall? Nobody's ever going to see it. How do you feel about it? Super cool. Thanks, Brandon. You're one of the best. So, so anyway, so then I flipped the sign over. Ta-da! I made the sign again. But I'm going to tell you. 
that the epoxy did what it did was because I didn't carve it deep enough. Mm -mm. It wasn't the carve. It wasn't the depth. That's not it at all. It was that epoxy that I was putting on to keep it from bleeding. And I thought to myself, in the moment, I can see the mistake now, but I can see the thought in the moment was... The depth, it wasn't the depth. The epoxy did what it was supposed to do. I had absolutely no bleeding. The It looks flawless other than it just wasn't deep enough. So in my pea brain, I thought, okay, I'm gonna change the depth to 0 0.1. No, I think it was 0 0.11 actually is what it was. And then I, I carved it again, which was fine, except for the fact, where are they? I had two stars right here, this one here and this one. Can you see how it ripped off the edges of the stars? And then look at the epoxy. It really didn't take this time. It was a mess. Now my husband says he thinks he likes it. He thinks it looks really good. Ooh, that's a hot mess right there. All right, so I'm thinking to myself, all right, so now the depth is, now the depth is too, too deep. I go to bed that night, I'm thinking about this disaster of a sign, the six hours of carving that I have on each side, plus the wasted epoxy, and I'm sitting racking my brain, trying to think of exactly what I can do to make this better and what I screwed up on. Then it dawned on me. It dawned on me because I needed to use sanding sealer to go ahead and seal the wood. It'll be just fine. I use it on all of my other projects. Why was I not thinking about sanding sealer on this live edge piece of birch? So that's what I'm gonna do. So now over here, I have this beautiful piece of birch. It's almost two inches thick, but I am gonna do some flattening down on it with my surfacing bit just because I don't wanna have to ship the solid two inches of wood because it's just a ton of added weight and plus I really don't um, I don't think he wants a two inch thick flag because I'm not really carving it that deep so the depth of a two inch flag is just really not needed okay so next mistake I made was an obvious one I tried to sharpen my flattening bit that I had because I'm trying to save some money aren't we all so I tried sharpening the bit and it didn't work out so well. I actually have some burn marks in the wood where it went in. Oh my gosh, this board is heavy. You can see the burning where it was just going in and burning the wood and making a huge mess. So I had to break down. That's when this little baby came into play. So again, this four, four flute uh, surfacing bit is something I am looking forward to using. I hope that you will follow along with this journey and see how that bit turns out. I'll probably do a separate video, um, a quick video on that, but I wanted to tell you those two and the three mistakes that I made. One is not using a sanding sealer, duh. Two, wasting your epoxy projects. Just stop and think about what you need to do to make your projects work and do what you know works. Chop, don't, I mean, it's okay to try and expand your your thought process, but when you're doing something like this and you're using high quality material and you're using resin of any kind is expensive, don't waste it. Work with what you know. And if you don't, go to YouTube and try and find people like me who have made these mistakes so you don't have to. <laughs> and then last but not least, always make sure that your bits are sharp and they are kept in pristine condition. Um, I will tell you something that I do use is I actually buy this at um, Woodcraft. It is a bit and blade. Um, it says resin, gum, and pitch. Remove or clean saw blades, router bits, and all cutting tools to go ahead and use this stuff. It's really great. You just spray it on your bits and let it set for 30, 30 seconds to a minute and you can wipe them off. So usually now I just get in the habit of every time I put out a router, I have like a old dirty towel and I just lay it on there, I spray it, kind of rotate it, spray it again, clean it off, and put it back in my bin where it goes. So, anyway, I want to ramble. I hope you found this video somewhat helpful and informative. 
And if you have, please hit that like and subscribe button for me and help me help me grow my YouTube community. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Thank you.